Hi, welcome to the Spring Security Tutorial. In this course, I will teach you everything you need to know about the Spring Security. So before we start writing the code, you should be familiar with Spring and Spring Boot basics. In case if you are new to Spring and Spring Boot, I have a dedicated course on my YouTube channel that teaches you everything about the Spring and Spring Boot tutorial. The link will be given in the description section of this video. Make sure to check that video to understand more about the Spring and Spring Boot basics. Okay, let's get started. Let's go ahead and create a new Spring Boot project. I will be using STS IDE in this course. Inside the STS IDE, we can create the Spring Boot project easily. In case if you are not using STS IDE, you can create a new Spring Boot project using the Spring Initializer. To create a new Spring Boot project inside the STS IDE, you can click on this option. The service URL start.spring.io The name of the project Spring Security, the type of the project, Maven, Packaging, Jar, the Java version, I have installed Java 16, the language Java, the group ID, in.bushan Sirgur, artifact ID, Spring Security, the version, I'm going to leave as it is, description, Spring Security demo, the package name, in.bushan Sirgur dot Spring Security. Click next. We will add the Spring Boot version. The latest and stable version is 2.5.4 at the time of this recording. And we will add a single dependency for now, which is the Spring Web dependency. We will also add one more dependency, the DevTools dependency for the development purpose. Once you are happy with all these configuration, go ahead and click finish. So this will take a couple of minutes to download all the dependencies and to set up the Spring Boot project for the first time. Once the project setup has been done, you can expand the project to see the project structure. Inside the source main Java, we have a base package and inside the base package, we have a base class. So now let's go ahead and create a new package. I'm going to call this controller and inside this, let's create a new class. I'm going to call this home controller. Let's add the annotation rest controller to make this class as a rest controller. Let's create a new handler method, public. This will return string. I'm going to call this home. This will be a get mapping. The URI slash home. When the user navigate to the URI or the URL slash home, we will return a string. You are on the home page. Let's save this. Okay, now we have created a REST controller and, have, and we have exposed the REST endpoint slash home. Let's go ahead and run the application. Let's open the main class, the base class and right click and choose run as and choose Spring Boot application. This will start the Spring Boot application on the port localhost 8080. Let's navigate to the browser and enter the URL localhost 8080 slash home, we should see the message you are on the home page. Okay, so now we have created a REST endpoint. Let's go ahead and add a Spring security to our application. The moment when we add a Spring dependency to our Spring Boot application, there are a lot of things will happen behind the scenes. Let's understand in detail one by one. So when the user sends a request to the Spring Boot application, First, the request goes to the authentication filter. Authentication filter is a servlet filter. It not only a single filter, it contains a chain of filters. And the, jo the job of the authentication filter is to authenticate the user. If the user is not authenticated, then it sends the request to the authentication manager. The authentication manager will send the request to the authentication provider. The job of the authentication manager is to identify the what authentication provider we are using in our system and it will hand it over the request to the authentication provider. In our application, we may using the JDBC authentication or LDAP authentication or we may using our own authentication provider. So the job of the authentication manager is to send the request to the authentication provider which we are using in our application. And authentication, manage, authentication provider is the one it uses user detail service to deal with the users. 
inside this authentication provider we are going to write our business logic to validate the user the most of the things will happen inside this authentication provider the authentication provider uses user detail service to deal with the user details and the password encoder to deal with the encrypting the passwords and once everything is done once the user is validated the request will send it back to the authentication manager and the authentication manager will send the request back to the authentication filter so the authentication filter it stores the user details inside the security context for the future reference or the future use and the request sent back to the client next time when the user again sends a request the authentication filter first it will check in the security context inside the security context if the user details are present if the user is already validated then it is not going to send the request to the authentication manager it will directly sends the request to the resource that the user is looking for this is how internally the spring security works when the user sends a request every request goes through this chains of filters again it is not only a single filter it is a chains of filters the request has to go through this filters it send it to the authentication manager authentication manager will identify the authentication provider and the authentication provider internally uses user details and password encoder and once the user is validated the request will send back to the authentication manager the authentication manager will send back it to the authentication filter and the authentication manager authentication filter will store the user details inside the security context for the future reference next time when the user again sends a request the authentication filter will look into the security context for the user details if the user is already validated then it will not send the request to the authentication manager instead it will directly send it to the resource that we are looking for all right so now let's go ahead and add a dependency our spring boot application and let's see how it works okay let's go ahead and add the spring security dependency to our application first of all i'll stop the server right click on the project go to spring and choose add starters and add the spring security dependency and click next and click on this copy all non conflicting changes from left to right and click finish once we added the spring security dependency to our application inside the pom.xml file it also add a one more dependency which is spring security test dependency okay so when we add this dependency to our spring boot application by default all our resources will be protected let's actually prove that let's run our application and if you navigate to the browser the moment you enter the url localhost colon 8080 slash home you will see a login page which means we are not able to access the resource which is slash home when we add the dependency spring security by default the spring security protects all of our resources we do get this login form let's understand this in detail when the user sends a request to the spring boot application first the request goes to the authentication filter the authentication filter will authenticate the request if the user is not authenticated then it sends the request to the authentication manager the authentication manager will send the request to the authentication provider by default it uses the basic authentication and it uses the default implementation for the user detail service internally it creates a new user with a name user and it creates a uuid as a password and it uses the no op password encoder it does not encode the password okay let's navigate to the browser and enter these credentials inside the browser okay let's enter the credentials the default username is user and the password is uuid which will be available inside the console so let's open the sts ide and inside the console you will see the password using generated security password let's copy this password as you can see this is a uuid and it is not encrypted let's navigate to the browser and paste the password and when you click on this sign in you will see the message you are on the home page okay now let's understand what will happen if the user sends a request again when the user sends a request again or the second time the authentication filter 
authenticate that request. If the user user is already authenticated, it will check in the security context. If the user details is already present, then it will not send the request to the authentication manager. It will directly send the request to the resource that the user is looking for. Let's actually prove this. Let's open a new tab and enter the same URL localhost colon 8080 slash home. When you hit enter, this time you will not see the login form. The authentication filter will authenticate the user and if the user details are already present in the security context, it will send the request to the resource that the user is looking for. The request will not be sent to the authentication manager and the authentication provider because the authentication filter, it checks in the security context. If the user details are present in the security context, it will directly send the request to the resource that the user is looking for. That's why we are not seeing the login form again. When the user sends a request to the application for the very first time, the request goes to the authentication filter. The authentication filter authenticate the request. If the user is not authenticated, it will send the request to the authentication manager. The authentication manager will send the request to the authentication provider and we will validate the user inside the authentication provider and it will send the request back to the authentication manager. The authentication manager will send the request back to the authentication filter and authentication filter will store the user details inside the security context for the future reference. It will create a J session ID and it will store inside the cookie. Next time when the user sends a request again, the authentication filter look into the cookie and it finds the J session ID. If the J session ID is finds, then the user is validated and it will send the request to the resource that the user is looking for. Let's see exactly where we will get the J session ID inside our browser. Let's open a new tab and navigate to the URL localhost colon 8080 slash home. When you hit enter, you will see the message you are on the home page. When the user sends a request for the second time, the request goes to the authentication filter and the authentication filter looks into the cookies for the J session ID. So if you open the developer tools inside your browser and go to the application and under the storage, we have a cookies. If you expand this, you will see the tab localhost colon 8080. Let's open this and click on this. You will see the J session ID. Inside this, the user details will be stored. The authentication filter will look into this J session ID. If the J session ID is present, it will not send the request to the authentication manager. It will send the request directly to the resource that the user is looking for. That is why we are not getting the login page second time. Let's actually delete this. Let's delete this. Now let's open a new tab and navigate to the URL localhost colon 8080 slash home. When you hit enter, you will see the login page this time because the security context will look into the cookies and inside the cookies, it looks for the J session ID. If the J session ID is not present, then it will consider that user is not authenticated. Then it will display the login form. This is how internally it works. Now let's test this inside the rest client postman. I will open the postman, enter the URL localhost colon 8080 slash home. The moment when I click on this send, I do get the JSON response unauthorized 401, which is unauthorized. Let's go to the authorization and let's choose basic authentication. The username, which is user, the password I will get inside the console. Let's copy this. and paste it and click on this send. The moment we enter the username and password, we do get the response you are on the home page. Now when the user sends a request again, let's say when I click on this send again, this time we should not get the unauthorized. Instead, we are getting the message you are on the home page. We are getting the response. So inside this postman, again, it creates a cookie. If you go to this cookies, and or you can go to the headers and inside this headers, you will see there will be a cookie, which is a J session ID. You can click on this go to cookies or you can go here, go to the cookies and you will see there will be a J session ID. So let's delete this. Now there is no cookies in our postman. 
let's open a new tab and enter the url localhost colon 8080 slash home when we hit enter again we do get the message unauthorized so far what we have understand is when the user sends a request or spring boot application for the very first time the request goes to the authentication filter the authentication filter will authenticate the request if the user is not authenticated it will send the request to the authentication manager the authentication manager will send the request to the authentication provider by default it uses the basic authentication and it uses the default implementation for the user detail service internally it creates a new user with the name user and it generates a uuid as a password and it uses no op password encoder it will not encode the password and once the user is validated it sends the request back to the authentication manager the authentication manager will send the request back to the authentication filter and the authentication filter will store the user details inside the security context it stores inside the cookie as a j session id for the future reference and it will send the request back to the resource that the user is looking for second time when the user sends a request again the request goes to the authentication filter and the authentication filter will look into the security context for the user details it will checks for the j session id inside the cookie if the j session id is present then it will not send the request to the authentication manager instead it will send the request to the resource that the user is looking for this is how the spring security works internally for the default configuration in this video we will learn how to customize the spring security as per our needs you will learn how to customize the http request you will also learn how to protect the urls by authenticating the user and you will also learn how to access the urls without authenticating the user let's begin so when we are working with the spring security whenever we want to customize the spring security we should use a special class called web security configurer adapter this is the class which is provided by spring security we need to use this class to customize the spring security as per our needs so we have our configuration class my security config and we need to extend this class with the web security configurer adapter this web security configurer adapter class provides bunch of methods it provides a method to customize the http request it also provide a method to customize the user details and a whole lot of methods all we got to do is we need to extend this class with the configuration class and we need to override the methods and we need to provide our own implementations let's look at some of the important methods which is provided by web security configurer adapter the most important methods are configure methods it provides a overloaded methods so the configure methods one of the configure configure method which takes the authentication manager builder as a parameter this method will be used to customize the user details similarly there is a one more overloaded method which is which will take the http security as a parameter this is the method which will help us to customize the http request and we are going to use this method to customize the http request in this video so before that let's look at what is the default implementation for this configure method so if you open the web security configurer adapter class and if you look at the default implementation for this configure method inside this method we can clearly see that this this is going to authorize each and every request that is coming from the form login as well as from the http basic so we are going to call the form login method as well as the http basic method in case if you don't know what these two methods are then make sure to watch the previous video because in the previous video we have discussed about these two methods and here they have used java 8 lambda expressions to write the code so what this code will do is it is going to authorize or authenticate each and every request they're going to call the any request method and they're going to authenticate the request so that is what we have learned in the first video in the previous video so whenever we add the spring security to our application 
for each and every request, the Spring Security is going to authenticate the user. By default, all the resources will be protected. So now let's go ahead and change this code. Let's go ahead and customize this HTTP request as per our needs. So let's look at the development steps. So the first step is to create a REST endpoint for the protect resource. We're going to create a REST endpoint. That REST endpoint will be a protected resource. Only the authenticated people will access that resource. The second step is to create a configuration class, which is my security config class. And we're going to extend that class with the web security configurer adapter class, which is provided by the spring security. And the third step is to override the method configure, which will takes the HTTP security as a parameter. And we're going to provide our own implementation. And the last step is to test the application in the browser or in the Postman client. So the first step is to create a protected REST endpoint. So in the previous video, we have already created a REST endpoint, which is a slash home. And we're going to create a one more REST endpoint, which is slash dashboard. So this slash home REST endpoint is actually a public REST endpoint. Anyone can access this REST endpoint. And this slash dashboard is actually a protected resource. Only the authenticated user can access this resource. So this is a get mapping. We are going to just create a method and we're going to annotate with the get mapping annotation and we will provide the URI, which is slash dashboard. And we're going to return a string. This is a dashboard contents, pretty simple. And the second step is to create a configuration class. We're going to create a class my security config and we're going to extend that class with the web security configurer adapter. We have already discussed about this class. This is a, this class is provided by Spring Security and this will help us to customize the Spring Security as per our needs. And we're going to add the annotation, add configuration annotation. And the third step is to override the configure method to customize the HTTP request. Inside this my security config, we're going to override the method configure. This is going to accept the HTTP security as a parameter. Inside this, let's provide our own implementation. Instead of using Java 8, let's use the plain uh, without Java 8 code, which is HTTP. On this, we're going to call the authorize request. And then we're going to make use of the ant matchers. The ant matchers method will help us to provide the URLs and we're going to provide the URI, which is a slash dashboard. This slash dashboard is actually a protected resource and we're going to call the method authenticated. So any user which is trying to access this resource, which is slash dashboard, then that person or that request or that user should be authenticated. So we're going to call the method authenticated. And again, we're going to call the ant matchers method and we're going to provide the one more URI, which is a slash home. This is a public URI. Anyone can access this URI. And on this, we're going to call the permit all method. So anyone can access this resource without authenticated. And we're going to add the same uh, old method, which is dot and, and we're going to call the form login and HTTP basic. So any user can call these methods from the login from the web UI as well as from the HTTP basic. The whole idea is instead of we are protecting all the resources, we are going to provide our own implementation. We are calling the ant matchers method and we are providing the URIs which we are going to authenticate. And also we are providing the URIs which is anyone can access, which is slash home that is permit all so that anyone can access this and slash dashboard dot authenticated only the authenticated users can access this resource. Alright, now let's jump to the STS ID and let's create these classes and let's override the configure method and let's test the API. Alright, I'm inside the STS ID and I have opened the home controller. Inside this, let's create a new rest endpoint public string dashboard. Let's add the annotation get mapping. 
and let's provide the URI slash dashboard. Let's return a static text. You are seeing the dashboard contents. So now this is a we need to make this as a protected resource only the authenticated users can access this rest endpoint and this will be a public uri anyone can access this uri so let's customize the spring security so let me save this file and let's open the project explorer and i'm going to create a new class I'm going to call this my security config and I'm going to keep it inside a new package. I'm going to call this config. Click finish. So inside this, first of all, I'm going to mark this as a configuration class. So let's add the configuration annotation. Let's extend this class with the web security configurer adapter. Web security configurer adapter. So let's go inside this class. As we discussed, this will provide a bunch of methods. One of the method which we are interested in is configure method. Let's open the method configure. You can see we have a multiple configure methods, which is a overloaded method. The one which we are interested in is the HTTP security as a parameter. So let's open this. And if you take a look at this implementation, it's pretty straightforward. It is going to authenticate each and every request. So for each and every request, this is going to authenticate the request, which is coming from the form login as well as from the HTTP basic. Now let's override this method and let's provide our own implementation. Inside this, let's override the method configure. This will take as a HTTP security as a parameter. So inside this, I'm going to make use of this HTTP security. HTTP dot, we're going to call a method authorize request authorize request and we're going to call the method and matches for this and matches we're going to provide the uris you can see we can provide a multiple uris as well and matches slash dashboard this is a protected resource and only authenticated users can access this uri so we are going to call the method dot authenticated Next, we're going to call the same method and matches and we're going to provide the URI slash home. This is a public URI. Anyone can access this URI. We're going to call the method permit all. And we're going to call the method and this can be happen from the form login. We're going to call the form login and also anyone can call the HTTP anyone can access this from the HTTP request so I'm going to call the method HTTP basic okay so now let's save this now let's open the browser and test the APIs so let me start the application let's me open the main class run as Spring Boot application The application is started you can see it has been generated a password for us let me open the browser localhost colon 8080 so let's try to access the public url which is slash home hit enter you can see you are on the home page we can access this uri without authenticated because this is a public uri we tell spring boot that spring security that anyone can access this URI so permit we have called the permit all method so that anyone can access this URI but if I navigate to the URI slash dashboard 
when we hit enter you can see we get a login page so only authenticated users can access that resource so now let's type the username which is user and the password which is available in the console let me expand this and let me copy this and paste it now when i click on this sign in you can see you are seeing the dashboard contents so now we can access this uri only when the user is authenticated and for the slash home anyone can access that because that is a public uri all right so this is how we can customize the spring security as per our needs this is how we can customize the http request that's it for this video i will see you in the next video in this video we are going to learn how to deny all the http request inside the spring security application assume that there is a scenario we need to deny all the http request in that case inside our security configuration file we can write a code to deny all the http request so any request that comes to our spring boot application the spring security will deny those request let's see how we can do that so inside our spring security configuration file we have override the configure method so this will accept the http security as a parameter so inside this we may call the deny all method so all we got to do is we need to call the authorized request dot any request so any request that comes to our application we need to deny those request so we will call the deny all method and we will call the http basic method so any request that will comes from the http that we are going to deny to those request so now let's jump to the sts id and let's write a code for this and test our application all right i'm inside the sts id let's open the explorer and let's go to the configuration class which is my security config and inside this what i'll do is i'm going to remove all of this code and let's make use of this http security http dot authorize requests authorize requests any request dot deny all we are going to call the deny all method so any request that comes to our application we are going to deny those requests and we are going to call the http basic so now let's save this let's start the application run on spring boot application okay our application is started let's open the postman because i have removed the http form so we are just stick to the http basic so let's open the postman localhost colon 8080 slash we have a two rest endpoints slash home and slash dashboard let's try for slash home the moment we click send we should get the message unauthorized the status 401 which is forbidden okay so now let's try for dashboard and the moment we click send you can see we get the message unauthorized so any request that comes to our application the spring security will deny those request okay now let's discuss the valid scenario for example we have created a spring boot application and in our application we have a two different users one is the user and the admin so admin resources are protected resources and the user resources are public resources so anyone can access the user resources whereas the admin resources are protected resources so whenever the user is logged in if the user is try to access the admin resources we have to deny those request okay whereas uh, in the user resources anyone can access those resources so how to achieve that so let's go to the sts let's create a new controller which is admin controller inside the controller package i'm going to create a new class and i'm going to call this admin controller and i will quickly add the rest controller to this rest controller and i will also add the request mapping request mapping and i'm going to provide a class level uri which is slash admin 
and I'm going to create a two rest endpoints public string admin home admin home this is a get mapping get mapping let's add the URI slash home let's return a static text which is admin home and I'll quickly copy this and I'll paste it I'll change this to admin dashboard admin dashboard and I'll quickly add this to dashboard and let's change the text to admin dashboard okay so now we have a two rest endpoints which is specifically for admin and similarly inside our home controller I'm going to add a class level mapping request mapping which is request mapping these resources are for user so user slash user slash home slash user slash dashboard so let's save this so now let's go to the security config file and inside this let me get rid of all this HTTP dot authorize requests dot ant matchers we're going to provide the URI which is slash user slash star star which means any URI that comes after the slash user that should be a public URL we need to permit those requests permit all similarly dot ant matchers slash admin slash star star any request any request that comes after the slash admin slash then that we have to deny those requests so dot deny all dot and dot http basic so assume that uh, in our application we have a you know login uh, login to the application the user will log into the application and now when the user try to he's having a role user role and if the user try to access the uri which is a slash admin slash home or slash dashboard then the spring security will deny those requests because he is having a role user and he's trying to access the admin resources so let's save this let's try it out our application is restarted let's navigate to the postman and let's enter the url localhost colon 8080 slash first of all let's access the public url which is user slash home so the moment we click send we should get a message you are on the home page similarly if i access the dashboard then i will get the message you are seeing the dashboard contents similarly now let's say uh, the user has been logged in and he is trying to access the admin resources slash admin slash home the moment we click send we should get a message unauthorized similarly if i navigate to the dashboard when i click on this send you will see the same message unauthorized 401 so this is how the spring security will deny all those requests the moment we use the method deny all it is going to matches for the uris and if the required uri matches then it is going to deny all those requests all right that's all about this video thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next video all right in this video we are going to discuss about customizing the multiple users in spring security let's begin so in the previous video we discussed that whenever we are customizing the spring security we should always use the web security configurer adapter class this is the class which is provided by spring security this class provides a whole bunch of methods it provides a methods for configuring the http request it also provides a method for configuring the multiple users we're going to override one of the method which is configure method which will take the authentication manager builder as a parameter and inside this method we're going to provide our own implementation we're going to customize the multiple users let's look at the big picture so when a client sends a request to the spring security application the request goes to the authentication filter the authentication filter will send the request to the authentication manager the authentication manager will identify the authentication provider in our application and in our application we are using the default authentication provider the authentication provider will internally uses the user details service to customize the users and it uses the password encoder to encode the password 
So we are going to customize the multiple users in our application using the in-memory authentication. Later, we will discuss how we can connect to the database and how to you know, uh, configure the multiple users inside the database. For now, configure the multiple users inside the in-memory authentication. Let's look at the development steps. All we need to do is we need to override one of the method which is configure method inside our my security configuration Java class. So inside this, we're going to override the configure method which takes in the authentication manager builder as a parameter. And we're going to make use of the in-memory authentication and we are going to define the users using the with user method and we are going to configure the password using the password method. And we need to provide the authorities. If you don't provide authorities, then the spring will throw an exception. So we're going to provide the authorities, which is admin. And we're going to define a one more user using the with user method. And we will configure the password using the password method. And we will provide the authorities, which is user. And we need to also provide a password encoder. If you don't provide a password encoder, again, the spring will throw an exception. So for that, we're going to configure the password encoder as well, dot password encoder. For now, we are going to use no, no op password encoder. We are not going to encode any password. So we're going to use no op password encoder and we will call the get instance method. Of course, this method is deprecated, but for now, let's use the no op password. Once we connect to the database, we can use the any other password encoder techniques. All right, now let's jump to the SGS and let's write a code for this. All right, I'm inside the SGS ID. I'm inside the my security config file. And what I'll do is I'm going to slightly modify this method. In the previous video, we have modified this configure method. What I'll do is I'm going to remove this star star and I will add home. So we're going to permit this URI, which is slash user slash home for all the users. And for slash user slash dashboard slash user slash dashboard, we're going to authenticate it. So authenticated. All right. So next to configure the users, we are going to override the method, which is configure, which takes in the authentication manager builder as a parameter. So inside this method, what we're going to do is we are going to make use of this authentication manager builder. So auth dot, we're going to make use of the in memory authentication in memory authentication we're going to use with user to create the user i'm going to call this bushan i will provide the username as bushan dot password to configure the password let's say one two three four five and we need to provide the authorities for now let's you give the authorities as admin to define a multiple users we can create multiple users with the same with user, the username, which is user itself and password. Let's use the password one, two, three, four, five. And we will provide the authorities. Let's say this is a user authority. Instead of this user, I'm going to call this Pawan. And also we need to use the password encoder. Otherwise the spring will throw an exception. So password encoder for now we are going to use no op password encoder no op password encoder dot get instance okay so now we are defining the multiple users using the in memory authentication okay so now let's save this and let me run the application let's go to this and inside this right click on this choose run as run spring boot application Okay, our application is started. Let's go to the postman. And what I'll do is I'm going to enter the URL localhost colon 8080 slash user slash home. This is a public URL. Anyone can access this URL. So when I click on this send, we do get the message. You are on the home page. But when I go to the dashboard, dashboard, when I click on this send, we should get the unauthorized. 401 unauthorized because we have configured the users and we need to provide the user details. So what I'll do is what I'll do is I'll go to the authorization and I'm going to choose the basic authentication and I will give the name Bushan and the password. I'll choose it one, two, three, four, five. You can see 
Now, the moment we click on this send, we should get the message, you are seeing the dashboard contents. Awesome. Let's try for one more record. Let me remove the session ID from the cookies. Now, when I user go to the, let me enter a Brad, Brad credentials. Let's say Bushan 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The moment we click send, we should get the unauthorized, which is we are not able to access this URL. Now let's provide one more user details credential, which is Pawan and which is one, two, three, four, five. The moment we click send, we should get the message. You are seeing the dashboard contents. Awesome. So let's recap one more time what we have done. So inside the my security config, we have override the method configure, which takes the authentication manager builder as a parameter. This is the method which we use it to configure the users inside our spring security. Inside this, we have used the in-memory authentication to configure the multiple users. We called the with user method to provide the username and password method to provide the uh, password. And we have used the authorities to provide the authorities for the users. And also we have used the password encoder and we used the no op password encoder to not to use any password encoder techniques. All right. That's all about this configuring the multiple users. In the next video, we're going to discuss more about this user details. I will see you in the next video. In the previous video, we have discussed about customizing the Spring Security. We discussed how to customize the multiple users inside the Spring Security application. In this video, we're going to discuss one more way of customizing the multiple users inside the Spring Security application. You might have seen this in some of the blogs or in some other YouTube videos or also you can see some other developers might be using this approach. So I will show you one more way of configuring the multiple users inside the Spring Boot application using the Spring Security. Let's begin. First, let's look at the control flow of the Spring Security. So when a client sends a request to the Spring Security application, the request goes to the authentication filter. The authentication filter will send it to the authentication manager. Authentication manager will identify the authentication provider which is used in the application and the authentication provider internally uses the user detail service as well as the password encoder. We are going to make use of the in-memory user details manager to configure the multiple users. In-memory user details manager is actually an implementation of the user details service. Let's look at the development steps. All we need to do is inside the my security configuration class, we are going to override the same method, which is configure method method, which takes in the authentication manager builder as a parameter. And inside this, we're going to create an instance of the in-memory user details manager. Like I said, this is an implementation class for the user details service. And we're going to make use of the user. We will call the with user name method and we will configure the username as well as the password and we will also configure the authorities like i said if you don't specify the authorities then the spring will throw an exception the spring security will throw an exception and we're going to call the build method this will gives us the user details okay and we are going to configure multiple users so we will configure one more user user dot with username user is actually a part of the spring boot uh, spring security application it is already built into the Spring Security. The Spring team has already created that. We will make use of this user and we will call the method with username and we will specify the username which is Pawan and the password 1234 authorities user and we will call the build method. This will give us the user details. Next, we're going to make use of this user details service. It provides a method called create user and to this create user method, we're going to pass the username. So user one and user two. And finally, on this authentication manager builder, we are going to call the user detail service. We're going to call the user detail service and we're going to pass the user details manager, which is user detail service. So this will configure the two users inside our Spring Security application, Bhushan and Pawan, which is having the authorities, admin and user. And also we need to provide the password encoder as well. If we configure, if we did not configure the password encoder, Spring Security will throw an exception. So we are going to create a bean of password encoder. We are going to use no op password encoder. We are, going, we are not going to use any of the encoding techniques. So we will use no op password encoder and we will call the get instance method. 
All right, so now let's jump to the STS IDE and let's write a code for this and test the application. All right, I'm inside the STS IDE. Let's open the configuration class, which is my security config. I'm going to comment this method. Let me create some white space. So let's override the configure method. Configure, which takes in the authentication manager builder as a parameter. And inside this, we're going to create a instance of the in-memory authentication manager in memory in memory user details manager i'm going to call this user details service new in memory user details manager so if you go inside this class you will see this is an implementation of the user details manager so if you go inside this user details manager this is actually extends the user details service in memory user details manager is actually an implementation of the user details service it provides bunch of methods like create user update user delete user change password and user exists let's go to the let's go to the my security config and now let's make use of the user which is provided by spring security with username and we will configure the user which is bushan dot password one two three four five dot authorities we have to provide the authorities let's say admin authority and we will call the build method so you can see the build will return the user details so let's store this inside the user details let me call this user one similarly i'm going to copy this i will configure one more user this is user two Let's say Pawan Pawan one two three four five user authority and next we are going to make use of this user detail service to call the create user method. Like I said, it provides a bunch of methods. One of the method is create user method. So user detail service dot create user and we will pass the users let me copy this and paste it and i will change the user which is user 2 and then we are going to make use of this authentication manager builder auth dot user details service we are going to pass the user details manager user details service so user details service all right so now we need to configure the password encoder as well public password encoder password encoder let me call this password encoder i'm going to add the p annotation return no password encoder dot get instance awesome so let's save this so now we have configured two user using the in memory user details manager one is Bushan and another one is Pawan, which is having authorities, admin and user. Okay, so now let's go to the Postman and test the API. Application is started. Let's go to the Postman and I'm going to type the request localhost colon 8080 slash. What do we have? Let me check. Go to the controller home controller we have slash user slash home slash user slash home is actually a public url public resource anyone can access this click on this send we should get the message you are on the home page similarly if i go to the dashboard dashboard we should get the unauthorized exception as you can see let's go to the authorization and change this to basic auth Let's provide power and 12345. The moment we click send, we should get the message. You are seeing the dashboard contents. Awesome. So what do we have done? So inside the security config, we have override the method configure, which takes in the authentication manager builder as a parameter. And we make use of the in-memory user details manager, which is actually an implementation of the user details service. And we have 
created the users using the spring provided class which is user and we will configure the username and password and authorities and finally we are going to create those users using the user details service and finally we are going to provide the user details service to the authentication manager builder and we have configured the password encoder we have configured NOAA password encoder okay that's all about this video i hope you understand and in case if you are looking for the source code you can head over to my website bushansirigur.in and go to the spring boot and go to the spring security and you will see all the posts which i have written regarding the spring security that's all about this video thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next video in this video we are going to create a custom user detail service class let's begin let's look at the spring security control flow as we discussed earlier whenever the client sends a request to the application the request goes to the authentication filter the authentication filter will validate the user if the user is already authenticated then it will send the request to the resources that the user is looking for if the user is not authenticated the request send it to the authentication manager the authentication manager will send it to the authentication provider the authentication provider will use the user detail service as well as the password encoder so in this video we are going to create our own custom user detail service class and we are going to provide an implementation to validate the user we are going to validate the user against the mysql database we are going to configure the users inside the mysql database and we are going to validate the users against the mysql database so let's look at the development steps so the first step is to add the following maven dependencies since we are connecting to the mysql database we need to add the data jpa we will also add the mysql connector as well as we will add the lombok lombok is a java library which will help us to reduce the boilerplate code the second step is to configure the data source we are going to configure the data source for mysql database spring.datasource.url which is the mysql database url and the database name demo db the username which is root the password my password make sure to change the username and password as per your mysql installation and we will add the hibernate property which is jpa.hibernate.ddl-auto we will set this to update this property will automatically create the database tables for us when we run the application the next step is to create a jpa entity we are going to create a jpa entity user and we will add the lombok annotation data and we will add the jpa entity at entity and we will provide the table name which is users and we will create the fields id email and password we will add the id annotation and generated value annotation for the id property and we will set the generation type to identity and the next step is to create a jpa repository for user entity we will create a interface user repository it extends the jpa repository we will provide the entity name user and the primary key type which is long inside this we will create a query method which is find by email and we will pass the email this will return the optional of user we are creating this query method because we need to validate the user against the mysql database with the email address so for that we are creating this finder method which is find by email and the next step is to create a custom user details service we are going to create a custom user details service with the name custom user details service like i said we are going to implement the user details service we are going to use the user details service this is the predefined user details service which is created by spring team we are going to make use of this user details service interface this interface will provides a method load by username inside this load by username we are going to write our own logic to validate the user against the mysql database this will accepts the username as a parameter in our case the username is nothing but the email address at the top we will auto var the user repository because we need to call the repository method find by email inside this we are going to make use of the user repositories to call the find by email method and we will pass the email address we are going to throw the user not found exception if the user is not found 
and once we found the user we are going to make use of the this method actually return the user details so we are going to make use of the spring provided class user and we are going to pass the email address and password like i said we also need to provide the authorities but we are not dealing with the authorities as of now so we will send an empty array so this will return the user details so this user class is an implementation for the user details so we will return the user details and the last step is to we need to tell spring security that we have created a custom user detail service class and you need to use that class so inside the my security config class inside the configure method we are going to make use of the authentication manager builder auth dot user detail service we will call the user detail service method and to this user detail service class we are going to pass our own custom user detail service class and we will call the password encoder method we will pass the password encoder for now we are not using any password encoding technique we are using a plain passwords all right so these are the development steps for creating a custom user detail service class now let's jump to the sts ide and write a code for this and test the apis okay i'm inside the sts ide so the first step is to create a database let's go to the mysql database and inside this let's create a new database create database the database name demo db let's execute the query the database has been created you can refresh this and you can see the next step is to we need to add the maven dependencies so right click on the project choose spring and click on this add starters we are going to add the spring lombok spring security we have already added so we will add the spring data jpa and the mysql driver so lombok data jpa and mysql driver click next we can click on this copy all non conflicting changes from left to right and click finish okay we have added the dependencies and it will start downloading all the dependencies the next step is to configure the data source so inside the resources open the application or properties file in this file we will configure the data source we will configure the data source for mysql database spring dot data source dot url and we will provide the jdbc url jdbc colon mysql colon double slash localhost colon 8080 slash demo db this is not 8080 this is 3306 and also we need to provide the database username and password spring dot data source dot username which is root spring dot data source dot password sc bushan 05 make sure to change the username and password as per your mysql database installation we will add one more property which is hibernate property to generate the database tables spring dot jpa dot hibernate dot ddl minus auto we will set this to update let's save this so now we have configured the data source the next step is to we need to create a jpa entity let's create a new package i'm going to call this entity inside this let's create a jpa entity i'm going to call this user let's quickly add the annotation entity we're going to add the entity annotation and we will provide the table name which is users and we will also add the lombok annotation data let's add the no argument constructor as well as the no argument constructor all argument constructor and no argument constructor let's create a fields private long id private string email private string password let's add the id annotation to the id property 
and also add the generated value let's set this strategy to generation type dot identity let's save the file the next step is to create a jpa repository for user entity let's open the explorer create a new package i'm going to call this repository inside the repository let's create a new interface i'm going to call this user repository this will extend the jpa repository and click finish we will provide the entity name which is user and the primary key type which is long let's import the user from the entity package inside this let's define a query method find by email we will pass the email address as a parameter this will return the optional of user let's import the optional from the util package so let's save this so now we have created a repository and we have defined the method find by email the next step is to create a custom user detail service class so i'm going to create a new package i'm going to call this security inside this let's create a new class i'm going to call this custom user details service this will extend the user details service class user details service click finish this user detail service provides a method called load by username we need to override that method so first of all i'm going to add the service annotation inside this we're going to provide our own implementation we will write a logic to validate the user against the mysql database so first of all let's auto wire the user repository user repository let's call this user repository let's add the auto wired annotation inside this method first of all we are going to make use of this user repository user repository to call the repository method which is find by email and we will pass the email so let's change this to email this will return the optional of user so if the user is not found we need to throw the exception so on this find by email let's call the method or else throw this will take the supplier so let's make use of the lambda to throw a new the user not found exception user not found exception we will pass the message user not found this will return the user entity back let's import the user from the entity package next we need to return the user details service so this is a user details we need to return this so what i'll do is we, we will make use of the implementation class of this user details which is user which is provided by the spring security so user you can see this is the class we are going to use user and to this constructor we are going to pass the email address and the password as well as the authorities so user first of all i'm going to create a new object and we will use user dot get email get email user dot get password and we will pass the authorities but we are not dealing with the authorities in this video let's pass an empty array new array list array list so let's return this so let's save this so now we have created a custom user detail service inside this we are validating the user against the mysql database so the last step is to we have to tell spring security that take this as a custom user detail service class 
to validate the user so inside the security the custom configuration security i'm going to get rid of this code and inside this to this user detail service we need to auto wire the custom user detail service class private custom user details service let's call this user details service let's add the auto wire annotation and to this user detail service method we will pass the custom user details service and we also need to provide the password encoder we will call the password encoder which we have defined here password encoder we are telling that we are not using any password password technique password encoding technique all right so now we have created the custom user detail service and we have already tell the spring security to use the custom user detail service so let's save save all the files we will get this exception no worries let's stop the server and restart the application looks like there are no errors all right so first of all we need to add few details to the database record so right now the database records are empty let's go to the database and refresh this if you go to the db we have this users table and inside this let's add a few records one email address let's add tom at gmail.com password tom at the rate one two three let's click on this apply click apply similarly let's add one more record id2 email address harry at gmail.com the password harry at one two three so let's click on this apply click apply so if you execute the query we have two records tom at gmail.com tom at the rate one two three password harry at gmail.com harry at the rate one two three password all right we are all set now let's test the api let's go to the postman and i'm going to enter the url localhost colon 8080 slash home this home is actually a public api anyone can access this api the moment we click on this send we will get this 404 let's see whether do we have this api or not let's go to the controller home controller okay we need to add slash user so let's add the slash user slash user slash home this is a public api we are getting the message you are on the home page similarly if i enter the dashboard this is a protected url the moment we click on this send we will get the unauthorized so we need to authorize this so let's go to the authorization tab and choose basic auth and let's provide the username which is tom at gmail.com password which is tom at the rate one two three so click on the show password tom at the rate one two three tom at gmail.com first let's actually enter a wrong credential let's say tom at the rate itself the moment we click on this send we should still get the message unauthorized the moment if i provide the correct credential tom at the rate one two three click on the send we should get the message you are seeing the dashboard contents Okay, in this video, we have learned how to create a custom user detail service class and we will learn how to validate the user against the MySQL database. That's it for this video. I hope you guys understand something out of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more such awesome videos. I will see you in the next video. Now let's come back to the today's video. In this video, we are going to learn how to encode the password. Earlier, we used to save the password in a plain text inside the database. Now, we are going to encode that password and we are going to store it to the database. Let's see the development steps. So, in order to encrypt the password, we are going to use one of the class which is provided by the Spring Security, which is bcrypt password encoder. Inside the my security config class, we are going to create an instance of the bcrypt password encoder. Earlier, we used to return the instance of the NOAA password encoder. Now, we are going to replace that with the bcrypt password encoder. This will help us to encode the password. The next step is to create a model class for register API. 
we're going to create a model class which contains the properties such as email and password. We will add the data annotation from the Lombok. And the last step is to create a REST endpoint for register API. Inside the home controller, we are going to create a new API which is register, the URI which is register. This will be of post mapping. Sorry about that. I forgot to change this to post mapping. This will be a post mapping and we will create a method register. This will take the user model as a parameter. We will make use of the request body to bind the HTTP request body to this user model bean. Inside this, we will create an instance of the user entity and we will set the email and password. While setting the password, we are going to encode the password. So for that, we are going to auto wire the password encoder and we will call the encode method on the password encoder and we will pass the plain text. So this will convert that plain password into encoded format. And finally, we will save the entity to the database. These are the development steps. Let's jump to the STS IDE and write a code for this. All right, I'm inside the STS IDE. So the first step is to create a model class. So inside the entity, we will create the new entity class, the model class. So what I'll do is I'm going to create a new package. Let's call this model. And inside this model package, let's create a new class. I'm going to call this user model. And we're going to create a private fields, the email and password, private string email, private string password. We will add the Lombok notation, which is data. Let's save the file. The second step is to create an instance of the bcrypt password encoder. So inside the configuration file, we are going to return the instance of the bcrypt password encoder. So let's get rid of this no op password encoder, return new bcrypt password encoder. This is the class which will help us to encode the password. Let's save the file. I'm going to modify this configure method as well. HTTP dot, we're going to first disable the CSRF. CSRF dot disable. Ant matches, we're going to permit the register API. Of course, we haven't this API in, in, in our application. We're going to create that in just a bit. We're going to permit this URI for all the users. And we are going to make use of dot any request that should be authenticated. Authenticated and HTTP basic. So inside the controller class, we have this home controller and I'm going to get rid of this request mapping at the class level and I will change this to register. This is a public URL. Anyone can access this. I will change this to post mapping and we're going to receive the user model. Let's make use of the request body. Let's bind this to user model. Let's call it, call this user model. Inside this, we actually return the user entity, user entity. And inside this, let's create an instance of the user entity. and we need to encode the password. So let's set the email first, new user dot set email, user model dot get email, and we will set the password, new user dot set password. So in order to encode the pastor, password, we need to en we need to auto wire the password encoder, private password encoder, encoder. Let's call this, password encoder and add the auto wired annotation and inside this let's make use of this password encoder password encoder to call the encode method this will takes the plain text so let's 
get the password from the user model so this password encode will encode the password and we need to save to the database so for that we need the user repositories so let's auto wire the user repository let's add the annotation and we will make use of this user repository to call this save method to this we will pass the user entity which is new user and we will return this okay so let's save the file and we need to test the api first of all let's go to the database let me refresh this inside the users table we do not have any records i have deleted the earlier records now let's go back to the postman and let's change this to post localhost colon 8080 slash register this is the public api anyone can access this choose body go to raw and select json and we need to provide the email and password email let's say bushan at gmail.com and password let's set this to one two three four five the moment we click on this send we will get the data back and you can see the password has been encoded let's look at the database it is saved in the database as a encoded password but if you look at the response we are returning the password to the client this we should never do that so let's go ahead and hide it hide this password let's go to the sts and open the user entity for the password field we are going to add the json ignore annotation so what this will do is this is going to ignore the password while we are sending it back to the client whenever we are binding the json property to this file it is going to ignore that value so let's save this let's go to the postman and let's try for one more record this is bharat at gmail.com the moment we click on this send we will get only the id and email back in the response perfect if you go to the database we have the record stored into the database now we need to test our api we need to while testing the apis we need to pass the plain password and it should match with the encrypted password all right let's go to the postman and choose get method localhost colon 8080 slash dashboard we have this api this is a protected api and the moment you click on this send we will get unauthorized because we haven't provided the username and password if you go to the authorization inside this basic auth provide bushan at gmail.com and the password is 12345 we are giving the password in a plain text let's see what will happen the moment we click on this send we will get the data back so now our password the plain password is comparing with the encrypted password and if it matches it will return the data back all right that's it for this video in the next video we're going to create a login api i'll see you in the next video all right now let's come back to the today's video in this video we're going to create a rest endpoint for login api let's look at the development steps so the first step is to create an authentication manager bean inside the configuration class we are going to create a bean for authentication manager this is the one which will help us to authenticate the user inside the mysecurity config we are going to override the method authentication manager bean this will return the authentication manager object and we will add the bean annotation the second step is to create a rest endpoint for login api inside the home controller first we are going to auto wire the authentication manager and we will create a method login and we will add the annotation post mapping and we will provide the uri slash login this method will accept the user model as a parameter we will make use of the request body annotation inside this we are going to make use of the authentication manager to call the authenticate method this authenticate method accepts the authentication object the authentication object is actually an interface the implementation class is username password authentication token to this we are going to pass the email address and the password this authenticate method will return the authentication object back once we receive the authentication object we need to set it to the security context holder so we will 
make use of the security context holder and we will get the context and we will set the authentication object to this we will pass the authentication object that we received if something happens if the user credential is not correct then we will throw the exception saying credentials invalid and we will return the response entity http status ok all right let's jump to the sts ide and write a code for this i'm inside the sts ide let's open the configuration class my security config and inside this first of all we are going to add the uri which is slash login so these two endpoints are the public endpoints so anyone can access these two endpoints of course this slash login we haven't created we are going to create that in just a bit let's override the method authentication manager bean and we will add the bean annotation so this will return the authentication manager object save this and let's open the home controller inside this first of all we need to auto wire the authentication manager authentication manager let's call this authentication manager auto wire this and we will create a rest endpoint let me create some white space public this will return the response entity of http status http status let's call this login we will add the annotation post mapping and we will provide the uri slash login this login method accepts the user model request body user model let's call this user model and inside this we are going to create the authentication object we are going to create an instance of the authentication object authentication let's call this authentication and inside the try catch block we are going to call the method we will make use of the authentication manager to call the authenticate object if you look at this this authenticate method accepts the authentication object this authentication object is an interface and we need to provide the implementation class the implementation class is username password authentication token new username password authentication token and to this we will pass the email address and password get email let's get the password as well user model dot get password let's bring this to the next line next once we get the authentication object this will return the authentication object let's store that in the authentication object once we receive the authentication object we need to set it to the context holder security context holder dot get context dot set authentication to this we will set the authentication object and inside the catch block let's throw the exception we are going to throw the bad credential exception bad credential expect exception throw new exception we will pass the message invalid credential and at last we need to return the response entity new response entity we will return the http status so http status dot ok which is 200 we need to add the throws declaration let's add this and save the file all right so our application is ready now let's go ahead and test the api let's go to the postman and enter the url local host colon 8080 slash uh, we have the login api now but before go to the login let's try to access the dashboard the moment we click on this send we get a message unauthorized so let's register a new account register this will be of post mapping 
go to the body choose raw select json and provide the email which is let's say ram at gmail.com password one two three four five and the moment we click on this send we get a new user back and now the user has been created but if i go to the register dashboard again the moment we click on this send still we get the unauthorized because the user has not yet logged in now the user will log in set this to post and click send the user has been logged in 200 okay now if the user try to access the dashboard which is a get mapping click send we do get the message you are seeing the dashboard contents awesome so now we have created the rest endpoint for login api and it is in place now that's it for this video i will see you in the next video in this video we're going to create a custom authentication provider let's begin so before we understanding the custom authentication provider let's understand the control flow of the spring security and let's understand where we can exactly create the authentication provider the custom authentication provider now you can enroll into my premium courses on udemy i have three specific courses the first one is build production ready rest api with spring boot which includes the expense tracker api the second one is full stack development with react and spring boot that includes the react hooks and the third one is jsp and servlets for beginners all the links will be given in the description section of this video if you join these courses through my link then you will get a 90 percent discount now back to the video so this is the control flow of the spring security so far we are discussing about this control flow when a client sends a request to the application the request goes to the authentication filter the authentication filter will send it to the authentication manager the authentication manager will send it to the authentication provider this authentication provider will internally use as the user detail service and the password encoder to validate the user up until now we are using the default authentication provider and it uses the user detail service and password encoder encoder internally so now we need to create create our own custom authentication provider and when we create our own custom authentication provider it's up to us to whether we use we need to use this user detail service as well as the password encoder if we want we can use these two services or we can create our own implementation to validate the user it's depend on us so now let's go ahead and discuss the development steps for creating this custom authentication provider so the first step is to you need to create the class and that need to implements the authentication provider so we're going to add the component annotation this authentication provider provides two methods we need to override those methods which is authenticate and supports so inside this this authenticate method if you remember this we are calling this authenticate method inside the login api using the authentication manager so the same method we are going to override here this authentication object contains the username and password so we will get the username and password from this object and we will first we will validate the user so we will call the repository method find by email and we will pass the user email address and if the user did not find then we're going to throw the exception username not found exception once the found user is found then we are going to check for the password we will make use of the password encoder to match the password we will call the matches method this takes in the the raw password as well as the encrypted password if the password matches then inside this we're going to return the authentication object so one of the implementation for this authentication object is username password authentication token to this we will pass the email address password and the authorities we will pass an empty array list if the password does not match then we will throw the bad credential exception so well we have created this authentication provider for example in our application the user will enter the username and password we need to validate those passwords so for that we have created a separate custom authentication provider for example in your application there might be a different requirements for example you need to authenticate the user through the fingerprint scanner or you need to authenticate the user through the iris scanner in such scenarios you will create your own custom authentication provider such as 
fingerprint scanner authentication provider and you will use the implementation for fingerprint scanner authentication token so you will provide the implementation for that and then we will return the authentication object so that is depends completely depends upon your application requirement so here we can't use fingerprint scanner or iris scanner so i just use the username and password authentication so the user will enter the username and password and we will validate through the database we will ag validate against the database so for that we have written this business logic so the next method is the supports method this supports method will actually return the boolean and this method is going to check all the authentication providers that it supports so right now we are only supporting the username password authentication token so we are checking this authentication dot equals username password authentication token if this matches then it will it will return the true that's it this is the only change that we need to do the second step is actually pretty simple inside the configuration class the spring security configuration class we need we need to register this custom authentication provider i will show you that how you can do that inside while coding that now let's jump to the sts id and let's write a code for this all right i'm inside the sts id let's go ahead and create a new authentication provider so inside the security class i'm going to create a new authentication uh, the authentication provider the custom authentication provider i'm going to call this custom authentication provider this is going to implement the authentication provider which is from the org.spring framework package and click finish let me expand this and first of all let's add the component annotation so that spring will scan this component at the time of loading the application inside this authenticate method first we're going to get the email address and password from this authentication object authentication dot get name which is nothing but the email address similarly authentication dot get credential this is an object this will return the object let's convert this into string let's store that in the password so next we need to get the user from this email address so let's make use of the user repositories to fetch the user by passing in the email address user repository let's call this user repository let's add the auto wired annotation inside this we will make use of this user repository to call the find by email method to this we will pass the email and we are going to throw exception if the user did not found new username not found exception we will pass the message user not found this will give us the user back let's call this user next we need to compare the passwords we need to check for the password let me import this user from the entity package inside this we will make use of the password encoder password encoder let's call this password encoder let's add the auto wired annotation inside this let's make use of this password encoder dot matches you can see we're going to compare the passwords the first password is the raw password the second parameter is the encrypted password which is user dot get password if this condition satisfies then we are going to return the authentication object the authentication object implementation is username password authentication token to this we will pass the email password and authorities so we are going to create a empty array list because we are not dealing with the authorities next if the password is not matches then we are going to throw bad credential exception bad credential exception invalid credentials and inside the supports method we are going to return a boolean we will 
check the authentication provider that it supports authentication dot equals user name password authentication token dot class that's it let's save the file the next step is to inside the authentication inside the security con config class web my security config here we need to comment this line and we need to provide our own authentication provider auth dot authentication provider and we need to pass the authentication provider which is the custom authentication provider let's auto wire this custom authentication provider let's call this authentication provider let's auto wire this okay we are passing the authentication provider so let's save this our application is restarted let's go to the postman and let's open a new tab let's go to the login let's change this to post localhost colon 8080 slash login inside the body let's choose raw and change it to json let's provide the email address which is pushan at gmail.com password let's change this to one two three four five the moment we click on this send we will get the 200 okay user has been logged in let's go to the dashboard the moment we click on this send we get the message user seeing the dashboard contents so let's go to the sts and let's stop this let's run this in the debug mode so we'll get to know that i'm going to put a debugger here and let's run this in the debug mode let me go to the postman let's change this to login let's change this to post application is restarted the moment we click on this send and you can see our control comes to this authentication provider custom authentication provider here our business logic will be executed and the moment we click on this next it will the user will be logged in super so now we have understand that how to create the custom authentication provider the main goal of this uh, video is to how to create the authentication uh, provider the custom authentication provider in your application there might be a different scenario in uh, in my application in my requirement just for the demonstration purpose the user will enter the username and password then we have uh, created a custom authentication provider and we have validated the user against the database but in your application there might be a different scenarios like you need to validate the user by using the iris scanner or the fingerprint scanner in such scenarios you have to create your own custom authentication provider and you have to create our own implementation for that yeah that's it for this video thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next video in this video we're going to discuss about configuring the authorities in spring security application so first let's understand what is authorities let's understand this with a simple uh, easy to understand example authorities is nothing but the permission in every real world application for example for every user there is a specific permission for example user 1 is having the read permission in that case that user is only responsible for reading the contents inside the application similarly the user 2 is having the write permission in that case that user is only responsible for creating the contents inside the application he does not have a responsible for reading the contents or updating the contents or deleting the contents so similarly every user is having a specific permission that is nothing but the authority so in this video exactly we're going to do configuring the authorities inside the spring security application let's understand how we can configure the authorities and uh, we will also understand in the next video how we can configure the role based authorities for now let's understand the authorities let's look at the development steps for configuring the authorities in, inside the spring security application now you can enroll into my premium courses on udemy i have three specific courses the first one is build production ready rest api with spring boot which 
includes the expense tracker API. The second one is full stack development with React and Spring Boot that includes the React hooks. And the third one is JSP and servlets for beginners. All the links will be given in the description section of this video. If you join these courses through my link, then you will get a 90% discount. Now back to the video. So in order to configure the authorities, we are going to create a new JPA entity, which is the authority. Okay. So it contains the properties, which is ID and the authority itself. So authorities in our case, it's nothing but the read authority, write authority, update authority or the, uh, you know, delete authority. So these are nothing but the authorities in our case. We're going to add the annotations, entity, table, data, all argument constructor and no argument constructor. By the time you already know all these annotations, so I don't go over in detail about explaining these annotations. The, goal, the idea here is to create a new JPA entity authority, which contains the properties ID and authority. The second step is to, we need to create a relationship between the user and the authority entity. So inside the user entity, we are going to create a field, which is authority, and we are going to add the one-to-one -one mapping. In real world application, every user is having a multiple authorities. Okay. But for now, just to keep it simplicity, let's assume that every user is having a single authority. Okay. So for that, we are going to add the one-to-one -one mapping in order to do achieve that we are going to make the one-to-one -one mapping. So we will create a field private authority and we will add the one-to-one -one mapping and we will add the join column annotation and we will provide the column name, which is authority underscore ID. So this is a foreign key to the authority entity or the authority table. Whenever we are saving the user, we will also save the authority of that user. The next step is to, we need to update the user model as well. Inside the user model, we are going to create the authority because we have to map this user model authority, uh, user model data to the user entity. So for that, we will also create a property inside this user model, which is the authority. So the next step is to, we're going to create a few rest endpoints. We will create the rest endpoint for dashboard slash dashboard, and we will also create a rest endpoint for slash profile. And the next step is to, we need to update the configuration file. So inside the security configuration file, we are going to provide the, uh, we are going to customize the HTTP request. So inside the configure method, we are going to customize the, the HTTP request. We are going to permit all for the slash register and slash login. So this slash register and slash login API are public endpoints. Anyone can access these endpoints. Whereas the slash dashboard endpoint is only accessible for the user, which is having the authority of read authority. Similarly, the slash profile endpoint is accessible for the user, which is having the authority write authority. So these are the uh, customizations that we're going to do. And uh, the next step is to, we need to pass the authorities to the authentication provider. So inside the custom authentication provider earlier, we were passing the empty array. We are passing the uh, array list, which is having the empty authorities. But now we have configured the authorities we are going to get the authorities from the user object and we're going to pass it to the authorities object. So inside this, we are going to create a list which is having the granted authority and we're going to uh, add the authorities. We will create the simple granted authority and from the user object, we will get the authority and we will add it to the authorities list. And that authorities, we're going to pass it to the username, password, authentication token, which is pretty straightforward. Okay, so nothing uh, much fancy here, we have just create a relationship between the user and the authority and every user is having a single authority and we have customized the HTTP request inside the configuration file. And also we are getting the authorities and we are passing it to the username, password, authentication token. That's it. Now let's jump to the STS IDE and let's write a code for this. Okay. I'm inside the IntelliJ idea. Let's go ahead and create the JPA entity for authority. So that is our first step. So inside the source main Java inside the entity class inside the entity package. I'm going to create a new Java class. I'm going to call this authority. So I'm going to create a fields. We're going to create two fields, private long ID, private 
string authority which is the name of the authority and I will add the annotation data and all argument constructor no argument constructor and entity and table we will provide the table name which is tbl underscore authorities and for the ID we will add the ID annotation and generated value we will specify the strategy which is generation type dot identity so let's save this so now we have created the JPA entity which is authorities and next we need to set up the mapping between the user and the authority we're going to set up the one-to-one -one mapping so let's open the user entity and inside this let's create a field private authority we're going to add the annotation one-to-one -one mapping let me create some white space and we're going to add the join column annotation join column the column name we're going to provide the column name which is authority underscore ID let's save this so now we have set up the relationship between user and the authority which is one-to-one -one. and if you go to the database and let, let me refresh this and you can see we have created the new authorities table and the users table if you open the users table inside the users table we have the authority ID which is the foreign column foreign key column to the authorities table and inside the authorities table we have the two properties which is ID and the authority itself let's go back to the IntelliJ idea the next step is to we need to update the user model as well let's open the user model inside this private authority we're going to we need to provide the authority as well authority let's call this authority so let's save this so now we have updated the user model as well the next step is to we need to create a few rest endpoints let's open the home controller and we have already created the dashboard so let's copy this and paste it let's provide the uri which is profile slash profile the method name which is also profile let's change this to profile so let's save this so now we have created a one more rest endpoints slash profile the slash dashboard which is already present the next step is to we need to customize the http request we have to customize we need to add the authorities we have to configure the authorities that we will do inside the configuration file so if you open the my security config and inside this we are configuring the slash register and slash login api we are permitting these rest endpoints for all the users but rest of all the rest endpoints we are authenticated but instead of authenticated we are going to provide ant matches slash dashboard dashboard dot has authority this dashboard endpoint is accessible only for the user which is having the authority of read similarly let me copy this and paste it the profile the profile endpoint or the profile api which is accessible for the user which is having the authority write authority so write authority so i can quickly format this let's save this so now we have configured the authorities the read authority the user which is having the read authority is accessible for the slash dashboard api similarly the user which is having the write authority is accessible for the profile so the last step is to we need to pass the authorities to the authentication provider so let's open the custom authentication provider custom authentication provider inside this first we're going to create the list so list which is of type granted authority granted authority let's call this authorities 
न्यू अरे लिस्ट एंड टू दिस अथॉरिटीज वे गोइंग टू हैड दिस सिंपल ग्रांटेड अथॉरिटी बिकॉज सिंपल ग्रांटेड अथॉरिटी इज द इंप्लीमेंटेशन फॉर द ग्रांटेड अथॉरिटी सिंपल ग्रांटेड अथॉरिटी टू दिस वी विल पास द अथॉरिटी वी विल गेट द अथॉरिटी फ्रॉम द यूजर ऑब्जेक्ट सो लेट्स गेट द यूजर डॉट गेट अथॉरिटी दिस इज एन ऑब्जेक्ट get authority on this we will call the get authority again so this will gives us the authority and we're going to add this authorities to the user password authentication token instead of passing the empty array list we're going to pass the authorities super so let's save this so now we have configured the authorities the next step is to test our api so let me go to the run our application is restarted let's go to the postman and before that we need to insert few records to the authorities let's go to the database and inside this authorities let's add the records one which is read authority and two which is write authority and three which is update authority you can also add as many authorities you want you want to support it in your application you can add all those authorities so let me click on this apply click apply and close so now we have our three authorities in our inside our database next let's go to the postman and let's go to the post let's click on this post and let's create a new user slash register go to the body choose raw select json we need to provide the email address let's say bushan at example.com password 12345 and we also need to provide the authority 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 which is an object and we will provide the id so id 1 and the authority name which is read so the moment we have click on this send a new user has been created if you go to the database and if you click on this users as you can see the user has been stored into the database but we supposed to store the user authority id as well but for some reason it is not storing that is because if you go to the IntelliJ IDEA and if you go to the home controller inside this register we are not setting the authority so let's actually set the authority as well new user dot set authority and we need to set the authority let's get the authority from the user model user model dot get authority okay so now let's save this and our application will restart okay our application is restarted let's go to the database and let me remove this let's insert a fresh record let's go back to the postman now the moment we click on this send we should get the record let's go back to the database and click on this execute command you can see now the user has been stored to the database along with the authority id similarly let's insert one more record which is bharat 12345 which is having the right authority the id which is 2 and the moment we click on this send we get the response back you can see now we have a one more record bharat and uh, the authority id which is 2 and bharat is having the write permission whereas bhushan is having the read permission okay so now let's go back to the application now let's log into the application localhost colon 800 slash login change this to post body raw select json email bushan at gmail dot com password one two three four five. The moment we click on this send, 
we will get the unauthorized this is not a gmail.com this is actually example.com click on the send you can see the user has been logged in Bushan has been logged in but if you look at this Bushan is having the read authority and if the user if the Bushan is tried to let me go to the my security okay so Bushan is having the read authority and if he is only able to access the slash dashboard but he cannot able to access the slash profile API let's go to the postman localhost colon 800 slash dashboard and click on this send you can see we will we will get the contents you are seeing the dashboard contents if I try to access the profile we will get the forbidden because Bushan is having the authority read authority and he can only able to access the dashboard API but he cannot able to access the profile API this is what the authority is similarly now if the user is logged in as a Bharat Bharat at example.com now Bharat has been logged in Bharat can able to access the profile click on this send you can see Bharat can able to access this but Bharat cannot able to access the dashboard api click on this send you can see for be done super so this is how you can configure the authorities inside your application it is you just need to set up the relationship between user and the authorities and then you can restrict it inside the configuration file the spring security configuration file using the ant matchers yeah, that's all about this video thank you so much for watching and in the next video we will discuss about configuring the roles i will see you in the next video in this video, we are going to discuss about configuring the user roles inside the Spring Security application. In the previous video, we have discussed about configuring the authorities inside the Spring Boot application. And in this video, we will discuss about the user roles. In real world applications, most of the times we will use, we will configuring the user roles instead of the configuring the authorities. So let's understand how we can configure the roles inside the Spring Security application. Now you can enroll into my premium courses on Udemy. I have three specific courses. The first one is Build Production Ready REST API with Spring Boot, which includes the Expense Tracker API. The second one is Full Stack Development with React and Spring Boot, that includes the React hooks. And the third one is JSP and Servlets for beginners. All the links will be given in the description section of this video. If you join these courses through my link, then you will get a 90% discount. Now back to the video. So the first step is to, we are going to update the authority entity class. We are going to set up the one to many relationship between the user and the authority because one user can have a multiple authorities or multiple roles. So that is what exactly we're going to do inside the authority entity class. We are going to create a field private user and we're going to add the annotation many to one many authorities are mapped to a single user so that is what the menu to one and we will add the join column annotation and we will provide the column name which is user underscore id so this is the foreign key column to the user entity the second step is to update the user entity inside the user entity we are going to create a set of authorities we will use the set uh, set interface and we are going to um, add the authorities so basically the user is having a multiple authorities and we're going to use the one to many annotation and we are going to use the map it by attribute and we're going to map it to the user property inside the authority so that is the second step and the third step is to inside the spring security configuration class we are going to restrict the urls so we're going to make use of the has role and has any role and slash dashboard this is the endpoint which is only accessible for the user which is having the role admin and similarly for the profile url the user is having the role of super admin can able to access the slash profile for the register and login anyone can access this because these are the public endpoints anyone can access this but for the slash dashboard only the user which is having the admin role can access this url similarly for the profile only the user which is having the role super admin can access this 
if you want to specify the multiple uh, roles then we can separate it with the comma we can use this we are going to make use of the has any role it will take the multiple roles uh, inside this method that is the second that is the third step and the last step is to we need to pass the authorities to the authentication provider for the custom authentication provider so inside the custom authentication provider we are going to create a private method which is get authorities which will which will take the set of authorities and inside this we will create a list which is of type simple granted authority and we will loop over the authorities that the user is uh, uh, getting the user authorities and we will add it to the simple granted authority and we will return that list and we will add that authorities to the user password authentication token so in the previous video we have discussed only one user is having only a single authority but here the user is having a multiple authorities or a multiple roles so we are going to loop through the authorities and we will add it to the simple granted authority and we will add it to the username password authentication token so these are these are the development steps now let's jump to the sts id and let's write a code for this and test the api okay i'm inside the intellij idea and most of the things i have already made the changes inside this uh, spring security application so inside the authority entity i have already declared the property which is user and i have added the annotation many to one and we are adding the join column annotation and we are creating the column user underscore id similarly inside the user entity i am creating the a uh, field uh, which is a list of authority this is actually not a list of authority let me change this to set of authority and this is a set let me import the set from the util package and this is a set of authorities and we're going to use the one to many annotation because one user can have a multiple authorities or a multiple roles and we're going to map it to the property which is user from the authority entity and also i have already inserted a few records to the database so let me go to the database and you can see inside the authorities let me execute this inside the authorities we have the four authorities which is role underscore user role underscore admin role underscore root role underscore admin and if you go to the users we have a two users which is bhushan and bharat bhushan is having two roles bharat is having two roles bhushan is having two roles which is of user and admin and bharat is having a roles which is of root and admin you can see the user ids and if you look at this when we are uh, working with the roles inside the database we will add the roles with the we will prepend it with the role underscore followed by the role name but when we are configuring the http request inside the that is what the next step is when we are configuring the spring securities uh, when we are configuring the http request we are not going to use the uh, role we are not going to add the role to the uh, role names for example uh, slash dashboard this url is only accessible for the user which is having the role has role we are going to make use of the has role method and we will provide the role name which is let's say for example a super admin super admin but here we are not going to prepend the root sorry not the root we are not going to pre prepend the role this and role underscore is uh, by default prepended by the spring security so whenever we are working with the role we should not prepend it with the role only we will insert the role underscore followed by the role name inside the database but we are not not going to configure inside this http request okay now the slash dashboard is only accessible for the super admin and similarly the slash profile is accessible for the admin admin if you want to let me change this to has any role if you want to provide multiple roles we can provide it with the comma admin slash user so now we have configured the http request which is slash dashboard is accessible for the super admin and the slash profile is accessible for admin and user so the next step is to we need to pass these authorities to the authentication provider so inside the custom authentication provider uh, what i'll do is we are going to instead of passing the empty array list we are going to pass the set of authorities i'm going to create a private method i'm going to call this get authorities 
and to this we will pass the user dot get authorities so let's go ahead and create this method let me create this method in the down and this will return the list of simple granted authority list of simple granted authority inside this i'm going to create a set of authorities so before that let me change this to set this is not a list so inside this we will create a set which is of type simple granted authority and call this list is equal to new hash set we are going to create a hash set and we are going to loop through the authorities so which is of type authority let's call this auth and authorities and inside this we will create the uh, simple granted authority list dot add and we're going to create a new simple granted authority and to this we will pass the auth dot get authority so and finally we're going to return that set of authorities return list okay so now we are passing the list of authorities to the username password authentication token pretty simple so let me save this now all we need to do is we need to test the apis so our application has restarted and we should not have any errors now let's go back to the postman and i have already inserted a few records like i said let's go to the postman let's go to the new request and choose post we need to log into the api so i'm going to change this to login and change it to body raw json and provide the email address which is bushan at example.com password one two three four five the moment we click on this send we will get the exception which is stack overflow okay that is because let me go to the user and i will change this to setter and getter instead of using the data we will use setter and getter that is because we will get some two string exception so make sure to use the setters and getters we should not override the two string method inside the authority instead of data let's override the setter and getter let's save this our application will restart now okay our application is restarted let's go to the postman click on this send you can see now the user has been logged in and if you look at this bushan let me go to the database and bushan is having the user role and the admin role if you go to this intellij idea inside this slash dashboard is accessible only for the super admin but now we have logged in as a bushan and bushan does not have the super admin role and he cannot access this slash dashboard let's go to the postman and change this to get localhost colon 8080 slash login slash dashboard click on this send you can see forbidden because bushan role is su admin user and admin and he cannot able to access the uh, slash dashboard because slash dashboard is only accessible by super admin but bushan can easily access the profile click on this send you can see he can access the profile similarly Bharat also cannot able to access the slash dashboard because slash dashboard is only accessible by the super admin and the user we are inserted inside the database does not have a super admin role so this is all about the role based authorities i hope you understand about this role authorities thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next video in this video we are going to discuss about method level security so far in our application we have configured the roles inside the security configuration file we have used the ant matchers and we have provided the urls and we have provided the has role method to 
protect the URLs based on the roles. There is one more way that is using the method level security, we can secure the methods, we can secure the rest endpoints. So let's see how we can secure the rest endpoints using the method level security. So first of all, what I'll do is I'm going to get rid of these ant matchers and I'm going to call any request and we will make authenticated. So any other request that should be authenticated. Next, we're going to add one of the annotation to this security configuration class, which is enable global method security. To this annotation, we're going to pass one of the option, which is pre post enabled, we're going to set this to true. So let's save this. So now we have added the annotation enable global method security annotation at the class level for the configuration class and we have enabled the pre post option. Next inside the controller, we are going to use pre authorization annotation. So inside this to the above this method for the dashboard method, we are going to use at pre authorized method and we are going to specify what user has to access this method. What is the role of that user that are able to access this URL? So has role, the role, if the user is having the root role, then that user can able to make a request to this rest endpoint, which is slash dashboard. Similarly, let me copy this and I will add it for this profile method as well. And the user should have a role which is super or let make it user. If the user or uh, if the user is having a role user, then he can able to access this rest endpoint. So let's save this. Now let's run the application. Let's go to the main class and choose run as run as Spring Boot application. So this will start the application and let's go to the database. Let me expand the tables. We have two tables, users and authorities. Right now, there are no records. Let's go ahead and make a request and let's insert few records. Let's insert a single record. Let's create a single user. Let's change this to post localhost colon 800 slash register. Make it choose body, choose raw change it to JSON and provide email address and password email address. Let's say Bhushan at example.com password one, two, three, four, five, click send. And you can see the record has been created. And if you look at the database, we have a Bhushan user in the database. And inside the authorities, we have two authorities for the Bhushan, which is root user and the admin user. So now let's go ahead and uh, test our APIs. Since the root user can be accessible to this API, the root user can able to access this dashboard, but user cannot able to access this profile because Bhushan is having the admin user, admin role, as well as the root role. So now let's go to the postman and let's open a new tab and first we need to log into the application localhost 800 slash login body raw choose json uh, let me quickly copy this and paste it click on this send the user has been logged in now if the user try to access the dashboard click on this send we can able to see the message you are seeing the dashboard contents because the user Bhushan is having the role root but he does not have a, a rule a role of a user since he cannot able to access the profile so let's access the profile the moment we click on this send we get the forbidden 403 forbidden because the user Bhushan does not have the user role. So this is how you can use the uh, method level security using the uh, pre authorization pre -author authorized annotation. You need to enable at the service layer using the enable 
you need to add this annotation enable global method security so that you can add the you can use the method level annotations which is in, using pre-authorize and post-authorize so that's it for this video thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next video